Okay, so let's actually do some programming in Python. So, typically, whenever you, you start with a new language, it's traditional to write a, a, a very basic program that, that checks that everything's actually configured and you've got it installed right. Um, and typically, the program that everyone writes is one that just says the words, hello world. Um, <clears throat> and in fact, in Python, we don't even need to write a program as such. We can just use Python commands. We can type them directly into the shell. So you, you, I showed you in the last video how to um, open the uh, open idle, and you've got that prompt with the three arrows, and you can just type commands in there. So, uh, hello world, we just need the words, uh, let me show you this. So we just type in print brackets, hello world. Incidentally, if you've done some programming in Python before, you might have seen it with, without the brackets. Uh, that's, that's Python 2. Python 3 always uses brackets to do the print. So uh, we're going to be using Python 3. Um, it's, a, it's a more common way of doing things. OK, print hello world. And when I hit return, it prints hello world. So that's, that's showing me that Python is configured right and it's all everything so far is working fine. OK, uh, and you can see you can print anything in the, in the, in the green text, the, the stuff you put in between the, the inverted commas, uh, that's uh, what, what uh, the shell will print out. So whatever you type in, hello universe, this is easy so far, that will, that will pop out um, in the output. <coughs> OK, you can also use the Python shell as a, an, as a calculator. So you can just type in uh, some sums in there, and it will it will calculate things for you. So 2 plus 2 is 4. 3 times 7 is 21. OK, so uh, you, can, you can use it like that as well. And of course, it's very fast at doing those kind of calculations. Uh, you've got to be slightly careful, because the, the shell only understands correct Python, as we mentioned the last one of the previous videos, uh, the syntax has to be exactly right. And you can see in all three cases there, there's been a syntax error. This, this red text is uh, the Python shell telling us we've done something wrong. So for example, it can't speak English. We can't type in 2 plus 2 in English. It won't understand what that is. On the next example, uh, you'll see there's only one double quote. So it's, we've started writing a, um, a sentence in quotes, the thing, some text in quotes, that's the thing that gets printed out, but we've only put one in, so again, it doesn't understand what that is. It says EOL, end of line while scanning string literal. That's a bit, a bit um, not very uh, helpful uh, error message, but uh, you can see, if you look at the, if you look at the coloring there, it, can, it shows you that the, um, the, uh, the text you're trying to print out isn't finished off. There's no closing double quote. And the last one, um, Harder to spot, but there's a space there. There's a blank space. So if you put a space uh, before the print statement, it won't work. Now that sounds a bit odd, and most programming languages that that wouldn't be the case. So in Java, JavaScript, C, that would be fine. You put spaces all over the place. In Python, however, uh, to get away with having less um, sort of junk all over the screen, Python is a bit more strict about the white space you put in, and it's it's quite strict. We'll talk about about the that a bit later. Okay, so but if you see something like that unexpected indent, it's seeing some extra space that you wasn't expecting to see. Okay, well that that's that's got us to uh, write some very simple code, but it's not very sophisticated to type Python directly into the shell like that because you know as soon as I turn the computer off, all the work will be lost. So normally what we do instead is write our programs in Python files. They're .py like. Uh, you know, .txt for a text file or .docx for a, a Word document file. Uh, we, we write them in .py in Python files uh, and then save them on the computer somewhere. Just make sure that you keep them well organized because just in this module alone, there'll be over 100 examples. So uh, you want to make sure you name them sensibly. OK, so that's our first example. Um, next up. That's the end of this video. Next up, we're going to talk. We're going to look through some other examples and see them running.